Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to 2020's Alternative Christmas Stocking. Of course, it's a little bit different this year. Instead of being in the beautiful surroundings of St Mary's Creative Space in Chester, it's just me in my house with a little cat next to me. Um, but we'll make do as we have done throughout the whole of the year. So for those of you that don't know me, my name's Steph. I'm the Artistic Director at Minerva Arts and I generally pop up around this time each year to do the sort of emceeing and the introducing at our Alternative Christmas Stocking event. Mm -hmm. This year is, has been very different, hasn't it? I think we all um, feel that and we all know that. Back in March, when the lockdown came in, all of our groups had to suspend immediately. And we eventually worked our way through into moving to online delivery in April time for most of the groups. We soldiered on, um, produced some lovely bits and pieces of work while we were online during that early part of the summer. And thankfully, we were able to come back into face-to-face -face delivery in September, thanks to the out-of-school settings guidance. Of course, we were then interrupted a little bit and we had to uh, be quite flexible due to things like um, the four week lockdown happening and having to manage different groups of young people, maybe having to isolate at different times and things like that. So really, the very fact that we have some pieces of work to share with you today is a massive testament to how hard the groups and their facilitators have worked, how flexible they've been able to be during this really difficult time. So we're going to see a few different pieces of work today. We've got brand new pieces of drama from Malpas Youth Theatre, Malpas Young Actors and Upton Youth Theatre. We've got a lovely little Christmas poem from our late juniors. And we've also got a very exciting piece of audio drama courtesy of Sandbatch Youth Theatre. But just before we get into um, the exciting stuff, what you're all here for, I just want to remind everybody that the Alternative Christmas Stocking is the biggest event that we hold in a normal year. And because of that, the money that we raise through the ticket prices that you pay, um, the raffle that we do, the refreshments that we do are a huge part of the income that we bring in in a normal year that helps really set us up for the work that we're going to do in the year to come. And of course, it's very different with us not being able to bring you into a space altogether. We can't charge you those ticket prices. We're not taking donations off you for refreshments. So we would really hugely appreciate it if you could help us out by donating an equivalent amount of money to what you would have spent on that ticket price to our fundraiser. The link is in the uh, comment section just below this video on YouTube and it's also in the Facebook event as well and we'll be sharing the donation link over the next couple of days when we share the recording of this stream as well. It really does mean a lot if you would send your donations our, your, our way over the Christmas period. Okay, so without further ado, this is going to look a little bit DIY, I'm afraid, because it is just me in my house and there's going to be a little bit of clicking and screen sharing um, to get the broadcast up. But I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to um, let our young people take over. Happy and joyful. Raise your friends to win. My favourite thing about Christmas is going to see, go down to my aunties and see my little cousin open in her presents. My favourite time of Christmas is when opening your own presents and waking up to the stocking full. My favourite thing about Christmas is Christmas is finally here. 
happy and joyful. Raise your friends to learn. I am so excited for Christmas. Stockings full. Time to stop them up. Mom is excited to watch me open my presents. Amazing presents. Sit, sit, sit upon them. Hello everybody and Merry Christmas. Now the next film you're going to see is from Malpas View Theatre. They have been working incredibly hard over the past five to six weeks through our online and Zoom sessions and also at Malpas Young Person Centre. And it is a very funny, very um, creative piece and I hope you enjoy it. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank my volunteer, Melody, for all the help that she has put towards this piece and over the past few years. As some of you will know, this is my last term with Malpas Youth Theatre and I'm going to miss them so much, but I hope you enjoy this piece. Welcome one, welcome all, to my sidekick channel. First off, I would like to say sorry for more, all my wrong predic predictions in 2020. But let's start off now. I predict in 2021 it'll rain cats and dogs and you'll get a chihuahua. I also predict in 2021 it'll be amazing with no corona but smelly socks. <coughs> Ugh, that was a stinky one. I predict there will be a chocolate downpour and everyone thinks it's deadly. Thank you for your time, one and all. Next time I see you, please pay me. Welcome to Christmas with the Pineapples. She's Penelope and she's Patricia. And you're going to have a cracking good Christmas with us. No, Patricia, just no. <laughs> Sold in packs of five for ten ninety nine. That was my line. Oops. <laughs> Day 85. I'm feeling really cold and um, it's getting worse every day. I'm finding it hard to hide from the monsters in the snow globe. But, it will, but I'm with my best friend and I know we can get through this together. I'll 
never win. Thank you for joining us live on the show. Today we have got some questions to ask you because lots of people are very interested in what's going on with the snow globe issue. Okay, so, is it cold inside the snow globe? You wouldn't even, you couldn't even imagine it. Definitely not my team wouldn't even so. <laughs> Um, when somebody shakes a snow globe, do you shake or is it a bit invisible? Yeah, uh, like, so like 10 earthquakes. Is there anything like strange about the snow globe inside? There are these weird monsters that, well, I'm not wanting to upset Professor Big Brain, but it, even though it ends hunger for uh, all the humans, and they get into this. Weird machine. Uh, well, it would probably be uh, uh, like the monsters would go to the everlasting meal. Okay, we like having you on the show, and we can't wait to have you live in the studio next time we try to get you out. Um, but we've got one other question to ask you before you go. Oh, sorry, got to go. Thank you for watching this morning's news and we'll be back, we'll be back with you in the evening. Bye! Let me, oh, Harry, my darling, darling, Harry. Hello, Hermione. Hello. Where's Harry? I don't know. I'm not going to ask again. I'd best be off. Wait! We're going to show you how to make an amazing cake that's sold in our stores. No need to wash your hands, it's pointless. This is going to be an amazing cake. The chocolate will melt in your mouth and it'll taste divine. It's going to be glorious. I think it's ready now. But first, taste test. A bit more. Emily and I run Sandbach Youth Theatre and I just want to introduce to you all the piece of work that we're going to be sharing with you today that the group have put together throughout this last term um, for our virtual alternative Christmas stocking and this is the group's first ever audio drama so we've um, taken on a really exciting new project um, and we've put something together that's really different and unique for us. Um, the group have used their wonderful creative minds to come up with a fantastic original story that we're going to share with you and we've collaboratively written this script together and it's been super fun um, and it is all their voices that you'll hear telling the story. Um, so I really hope you enjoy it. It's called Whispers from the Forest. I'm really proud of the group, so I want to say well done to all of you. Um, and I hope everybody has a Merry Christmas. Enjoy! The trees shivered with every drop of rain, gusts of wind and tremors of light. In the silence, if you listen closely, you can almost hear them breathe. The trees, the leaves, the flowers. This is where our tale begins. In a forest of wonder, of beauty, of life, in the shadows of the trees lurks a beast. Nobody's ever seen it. Nobody's ever felt it. But it is there. It can be heard. Our tale follows a young girl living deep within the forest. She is not your regular girl that you and I would know. She is a part of an ancient forest tribe. With its coconut shaped houses intertwining in a series of brown rickety pathways and emerald lush leaves, the tribe take guard of the forest floor. 
Although they are the guardians of the sacred forest, setting foot on this ground is forbidden, for on the ground is where the demon works. The young girl's head was full of so many questions that she was desperate for answers for. What is happening? Why do we have to isolate ourselves from the outside world and forest? Do you know what is down there? Will it hurt us? Why is it us humans must remain in the trees? What made you forbid us touching the ground? One day, these questions were finally answered and she was told of some poachers who prowled the forest floor. Although they were a danger to all life in the forest, there was one thing that they couldn't destroy, one thing they were feared of all and more powerful than them, the beast with the piercing red eyes, the demon of the forest. The girl didn't know what this meant or if she should ask any more questions, but she was certainly curious. One morning, the girl awoke and decided to go on one of her adventures. She began clambering and climbing from tree to tree and racing across the rickety bridges that joined each tree house. All of a sudden, a creak and a crash, and... Ah! What's happening? Where am I? Huh, huh, hello? Who are you? My name is Tico. I'm the forest wolf. Sorry if I startled you. I'm hungry and I'm looking for food. The girl took a huge gulp, suddenly realising why the ground is forbidden. Don't worry. I'm not looking for humans for food. You you look scared. Can I help you? The girl told Tico of the mysterious happenings she had heard about in the forest of this fierce demon and wondered if he had seen some of these missing poachers. I'm terribly sorry, but I haven't heard of such a thing. I can help you if you like to go on an adventure together. I like adventures, and I would love to meet this so-called demon. So off they went into the dense dark forest in search of the demon with the red eyes. In the distance, the girl could hear galloping of hooves. This grew louder and louder. She wondered where it was coming from. Suddenly, approaching through the trees were two silvery white horses. Stay away from her. Never trust a demon soul. Take a look into his eyes and you'll behold the embodiment of Satan. Never, ever trust that possessed killer. Hmm... Are you sure? I always thought the fellow was trustworthy. Anyway, it is rude to be suspicious when someone... Oh no, the choice is, I'm in a sticky situation. I like the second horse. I'm not a possessed killer. Yes, you are. You couldn't pass a fly without engulfing its soul. You both are trustworthy, but one of you is right. Before you decide, look closely into his eyes and you will see the red of his soul. Ah! <gasps> Quick, jump on our backs and we'll take you to safety. Horses began to tell the young girl of a vision that he'd have of a sacred lake in the middle of the forest. This vision showed them the healing power of the water from this lake. A healing power that could cure any curse. Oh, we must get there before it's too late. They made their way to the sacred lake, which when they arrived was surrounded by a group of protectors. 
Together they made a plan for the horses to distract the crowd of guardians whilst the girl entered the water. Filling her glass with as much water as she could, the girl climbed onto the horse's back and raced back to the forest steps. They were soon greeted by the angry Tico. You'll never stop the great powers of the demon curse. Maybe not, but I can still try stopping you. The girl threw the water on Tico. <laughs> There was a puff of smoke, and then the eyes were gone. Thank! Tico was stopped, mid-sense when saw it. The, this was not the scene in my vision. Everyone stood, open-mouthed and terrified. There was a red smoke above Tico, slowly but surely heading for the girl. Hi everyone, thank you so much for participating in this year's digital Alternative Christmas Stocking. I'm so glad that you get to see uh, Malcolm's Young Actors perform their version of Jack and Hyde. Due to COVID and a variety of issues, we weren't able to complete the whole script. Uh, so we've got three amazing actors who are going to give you a short snippet of the whole play all together. So I hope you enjoy it as much as we did perform it. Thank you. Enter. Good evening, Jackal. Good evening, Austin. Tea? Yes, please. You may take a seat. Thank you, Jackal. How has Lyman been the past couple of days? He should be here any minute. Speak of the devil. Enter. Good evening, Lyman. Good evening, Jekyll. Good evening. Good evening, Austin. So what have you two been doing since the last time I saw you? Well, actually, I've been studying the structure of the bones. You? I have been uh, studying something of a higher level. The brain, as it were. Taking the animal out of the man. Um, I don't believe that is possible. Utterson, you're a lawyer. I don't think you'd understand such things. Well, 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 I have to agree with Utterson here. I don't think that's going to happen. I see it's getting quite late, and I know both of you have very busy lives. I shall speak to you at some point in the morning. Good evening, gentlemen. Those fools! They don't believe me. Maybe I should make them believe. Another fail. I may have to buy new salts at this rate. The streets are filled with nothing else. Yes. It's terrible. Who would do such a thing? No man, clearly. I can't believe this. In such a brutal way as well. How? He was beaten to death. With a club. A horrible, horrible thing. Poor old man. Well, that means the man is still on the loose, which means everybody needs to be cautious. This is too much for me. It hasn't been a killer in London for ages. I'm leaving town. I'm sorry. Coward. How oh, dare you! A friend's just died for calling me a coward. You leave me here undefended. I've no other choice. I could be killed. I have a family. I have to go. 
good luck on your project. One of my friends is dead and the other has left me. I shall end this hide, whether you approve of it or not. Andy and I run Upton U Theatre. We are presenting a piece today called To Boy. The idea and the premise of the piece is that these people live in a world where boys are taboo. So much like what's going on with Covid at the minute, we decided to explore the concept that things are not the norm in the world at the moment and we decided to explore a world in which things are not the norm. So as I said, in this world, boys are not very common, and being a boy, in fact, can be dangerous. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> boys because they stink and they are very annoying and I just hate them. Today I saw a boy on social media. A boy. It was so idiotic. He was posing like like he was allowed to be there. Can you believe that? I told my BFFs we obviously need to do something and we're getting rid of him soon. Today my BFF Jane told me about the only boy on TikTok aka the whole planet so basically i'm just gonna hack into his tiktok account see his personal information go to his house and we can kill him that's all we need to do oh. 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 where have you been have you seen this what? it's a boy I, he's like it's like he's allowed to be there i know right we need to get rid of him he's so like ugly oh. We're passing by a coffee place and stopped there for a drink. We met some of Ginny's old high school friends and they didn't seem nice. I don't know how things work around there, but they kept giving me funny looks. Was it because I was a boy? I'm pretty sure I even heard them talk about killing a boy. They said his name was Michael. Could it be Michael, my friend? If it is, I need to save him. I'm really worried for Alex because I met these girls today who said they were going to kill this boy they found on Insta. I'm really worried they're going to kill Alex. Um, I'm going to go get something. Okay. Anyway, have you seen this? Yeah. It's Look. disgraceful. It's, it's a boy. boy. What are you going to do about it? We, well, we're going to probably just kill him. I mean, obviously we've got to do something. Yeah, they yeah obviously. Yeah, obviously. Are you right? Like, oh. How is it not believable? Okay. Like, this boy is in my life. I just want him to get out of my life. Okay, um, mm, no, it's I, need to, I need to go to the toilet. We need to talk. Why are we here? Well, that was the weirdest conversation I ever had. They're talking about this boy on social media called Michael. Like, but I have a friend named Michael. What if it's him? It probably is. Then we've got to save him. They said they're planning on doing it tonight. Hey guys, it's just me, Adrian. I just spotted something with us. I was messing with my friend over there. See if I can't do anything about it. Do you think they've done anything to AJ too? We better go talk to him. So what's the plan? How are we going to get rid of him? Well, I just, I found out where he lives. 
You would not believe it. Just right around the corner. I can't believe you didn't notice it before. I know, right? Meet me at the airport at 10 p.m. sharp. We're gonna kill that guy. Um, okay. You're not gonna chicken out, are you? No. You better not. I'm so sorry I interrupted your video call, but like, something's going on. Jade's gonna tell on us. She's actually gonna tell on us, and we need to think of a plan. I mean, we can't just act like we're not doing it. OMG, I don't know if anyone can tell, but I really don't feel good about this anymore. Who knows, maybe the world could refill with boys again in a thousand years, and then history lessons will be like, Oh, Jane was the one who wanted to kill them all. When I should probably tell someone what's happening. But then I might lose them as my friends. They'll hate me for ratting on them. Oh, why is this so hard? Today, I don't even know. Jane is acting really strange, and I feel like she's regretting what we did to that hideous boy. I need to get her back into the dark side and fast. I did a great job, as always, hacking into the boys' TikTok account, and it took 10 minutes, 10 minutes of my life doing that, and, like, she doesn't even appreciate it. I'm, like, man. Anyway, I have to go now. My mum's finished making her disgusting, and I mean disgusting, French soup. <laughs> I would. I want to keep writing, but sadly, it's still time. Bye. Uh, it's to rescue you, my friend, and Michael from and the horrible girl. He's okay. He's just resting, and hope to see you soon. I met up with AJ and Alex today. AJ informed me that Michael was missing for several weeks, but is now safe. Alex is my best friend, and I'm really worried that he's going to be next. I need a plan to save him. I need to organise to meet up with AJ to ask him how we saved to ask him how he saved Michael, and also how to keep Alex safe. So there we are. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I really hope that the tech held up for you okay. But if it didn't, don't worry because I'll be uploading the full version of that video to um, our YouTube account and sharing that through all of our social media channels as well. Um, big thanks for being here with us today. It's been really nice to see the viewer numbers um, popping up every so often. Um, and I, I'm sure that you feel exactly the same way that I do, that same exact same sense of pride that we would normally be feeling after watching the performances in person at St. Mary's. But at the same time, I'm pretty desperate to see all of those guys back where they belong, on a stage, entertaining us and being brilliant. But those pieces were so amazing, so creative and such great storytelling. We've got some really big plans for next year. We really hope that we're going to be able to uh, perform in front of you in a live environment again sometime really soon. We're actually setting up three new groups in the new year as well. So we've got uh, a group in Lim joining us and we've also got two groups in Middlewich over in Cheshire East going to be joining us as well. So by this time next year, we'll have an even larger group of amazing, talented young people to share their work with you. I want to say a big thanks to all the venue partners that have supported us this year. It's really challenging for them and they've been amazing in making sure that all of our spaces are as safe as they can be. So a big shout out to uh, Malpas Young Persons Centre, to St Mark's Church in Leitch, to um, the Royal British Legion in Upton and to the Sandbach Masonic Hall. I, of course, got to say a big thank you to all of our amazing staff members. You saw work that was created by Holly, uh, by Kyle, by Emily and by Mandy, as well as the Leitch group who were supported by the brilliant Lara in that um, sec selection of videos. We've also got Jude, um, who is uh, very much still waiting in the wings and ready to come back to us as soon as she can after having her lovely baby this year. As you'll have seen from the introduction to the Malpas Youth Theatre Show, we are unfortunately saying goodbye to Holly at the end of this term. Um, we wish her all the best for the future. Um, she's been an amazing part of the Minerva team and I'm sure you'll all joining, join me in wishing her the best. 
Uh, you'll have seen a new face in there as well. Mandy, who's working with Upton Youth Theatre at the moment, um, joined us this year and she's also taken over as our youth theatre manager. So you'll all be hearing a lot more from her in the months to come. Another quick reminder, please, please, please send your do donations our way. If everybody that tuned in today donated the equivalent of a ticket price that you would be paying to come and join us at St Mary's, that's about a fiver, then we'd be well on the way to um, kickstarting 2021 in the way that we really want to. The link to make those donations is in the comments section in uh, underneath this stream, and it will be out on Facebook, all of the social media channels, and with um, the pre-recorded full form of this video. That's it from me. There's nothing more for me to say apart from have a very Merry Christmas. Have an amazing new year. Let's cross our fingers that 2021 has got some much more positive things in store for us. We cannot wait to come back to work with all of our amazing groups of young people and see just what fantastic creative things they've got to share.